Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk you through how I like to set up for fishing Nymphalo Dry on a small to medium sized river. So we'll start with the rod. Uh, for me, I really like to fish a 9 foot 4 weight or a 9 foot 3 weight. I find that I want the 3 weight or the 4 weight because that's what gives me tibet protection so I can protect my lighter tibet um, and not break fish off on the strike. Um, and I find the nine foot length is really good because it strikes the balance between being able to fish on a small stream if you're a bit tight and you have trees around, but it also, um, it gives you the length as well to be able to reach over currents, throw mends if you need to. And it's also a really good length for accuracy wise as well, um, cause it's not too long. So reel and line wise, you want something that matches your rod nicely. Um, they're a very personal thing, lines. You wanna make sure you can feel uh, the line low when you cast. So if you're someone who likes to overline your rod, that's absolutely fine. Uh, I like to go with the, if I'm using a four weight, I like a four weight line, or sometimes I even like to underline um, and fish like a three weight on a four weight rod, for example, just because it's a slightly more delicate presentation. Um, but again, it's a personal preference thing. And the reel, you really want something nice, nice drag, easy to use. You don't want the line to get caught behind it. Um, and you would just want it to be comfortable. You want your rod to be nicely balanced so you can fish with it all day pretty easily. Now the leaders and the tippet is one of the most important things um, in river fishing because it's ultimately, it dictates how your fly is gonna present. Um, I like quite a few different leader constructions depending on where I'm fishing. Uh, you can tie them out of Maxim Maxima Chameleon or Ultra Green or JMC Camophil, like just thicker monofilaments and create your own taper. Um, I like to do that. Or you can also go to um, just a you know, manufactured tapered leader. They come out of the pack, they're really nice, they're a really good way to start. Um, and to keep it simple, that's what I'm gonna do today. We're gonna go with a, a nine foot five X. Um, again, ultimately, as you'll see with this is, what you wanna do with your fishing, or what I like to do with my fishing, is try to create a system. So I wanna have a leader, a base leader, which is what we're talking about here, that remains the same wherever I go fishing. So I understand how it's gonna behave and turn over. And one of the ways we're gonna make sure we fish with the same base leader is we're actually gonna attach a tivet ring onto the end, which we're gonna do now. Tivet rings, I absolutely love. They're really, really handy. Um, what you'll find is when you buy a pack of tivet rings, um, they'll typically come on a little, uh, like a swivel, like a snap swivel. Um, two millimeter rings are absolutely amazing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie that onto the end of our leader. And the reason for that is if you do break off in a tree um, or you get tangled, you're always just gonna kind of cut back to the tippet ring and you're not gonna eat into your base leader. So every time you go fishing throughout the season, you're gonna be fishing the same leader, uh, essentially the same core leader, and you're just gonna be adjusting the tippet depending on what water you come across um, and how you wanna fish. All right, so now I have my tippet ring attached to the, um, the finest end of my tapered leader here that I've got out of the pack. It's really important, as I said, because if we do break off, we're always gonna cut come back to the tippet ring there. Um, so we are able to maintain, um, you know, one integral leader and you'll be amazed. It'll like last your whole season most of the time. Now what we're gonna do, and this is the really important part and why I wanted to do this video, because I think this is one of the keys with rigging the nymph and the dry, and that is uh, the tippet. How much tippet from our leader? And then also how do we tie the dry on? How do we tie the nymph on? So we can do that now. So the main reason I really wanted to do this video was to show how I fish, uh, how I rig my dry and my nymph. And it's really important because, and slightly different to what a lot of people would do, um, I really like fishing my dry off a dropper for a few reasons, and I'll explain that in a second. But to rig that, um, to keep it simple here, got my tippet ring, which we tied on there. I am now going to, uh, my dry, I'll, let's say I'm gonna fish um, about, two foot from the tippet ring to my dry, which is pretty common for me on a small to medium sized river. We'll go about yay long. Then my dry, um, the dropper for my dry is gonna come off here. So I'm gonna extend this to what will end up being about 60 centimeters. And 60 centimeters for me is the ideal distance for my nymph to fish below my dry, uh, because I find that's for me where the technique, the type of water that it's good in suits. If I'm fishing much deeper and much faster water, I'm probably gonna lean towards urinymphing or fishing two nymphs under an indicator or a dry. Um, if I'm in much shallower water, where fishing, um, you know, my nymph suspended at this angle is gonna be too shallow, I can always lighten my fly up and it'll fish at this angle, or I can just fish a single dry, um, or I can fish an unweighted nymph. So that's the reason for that. So that'll be about where my nymph will be here. 
So we're going to nip that off. Keep a hold of the tippet. I'm tying on 6x tippet here as well, I should point out. Okay, now we need to attach our dropper. So what I'm going to do for the dropper is I'm going to pull off a separate bit of tippet here and nip that. Like we said, about yay far below my tippet ring, one to two foot is a nice distance. I'm going to attach this dropper, this is the one people ask a lot. Um, and it's in a few articles I've written um, in the recent Fly Life I mentioned this. I actually have like kind of a mini fact box on it. Um, but I like a triple surgeons for my dropper. So I'm going to lay the two lines across one another, create a loop, and then pass it through three times. There's lots of good videos on YouTube that'll show you in detail how to do a triple surgeons. Tie like that. Um, now you can actually use the top or the bottom dropper to put your dry on. Um, I typically use the bottom, the bottom tag, the bottom dropper. Put that tip it in there. So there, you can see now I've got a tip ring. I've got a triple surgeons with a dropper hanging off where my dryer is going to be attached, and then I've got what will be 60 centimeters to my nymph. And now it's just a matter of tying a uh, dry and our nymph on, which I've done. I just tie my flies on here with a improved clinch knot, half blood knot, depends what you like to call it. Very, very simple knot, nothing too fancy. And that's my rig. But what I want to show you is mainly the dry. The dry dropper here and the reason that I like my dry whoop, tied off a dropper so much is because as you can see it's not tethered to the main line so that does a few things when you are fishing your dry fished off a dropper like this off a very short tag is going to fish more freely it's not going to be as anchored or tethered by uh, the nymph coming off the shank or the bend of the hook so that dry is going to fish nice and freely you'll find that when fish do eat it they're not kind of fighting a tight bit of line so you actually get better hookups and more hookups um, also it allows you to um, to change your dry let's say it's not working for you um, the way you tie it on there you've got room to chop it off tie another fly on another two flies on throughout your session and um, you don't have to actually change the nymph whereas if you tie to the shank of the dry fly you have to tie on more knots essentially because you've got to chop 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 um, and again, like I said, it just doesn't fish in the same way. It doesn't fish as freely and drift as nicely. So there you go. It's a very simple way to set up for Nymph Under Dry. I hope that all made sense. Um, I hope it wasn't too complicated. Um, and yeah, if you like this kind of video, please let me know. I've had a lot of people ask me to do this video for a, a long time. And I've been hesitant because they're not my forte doing this style of video. Um, but yeah, hopefully you got something out of it. Um, hopefully it made sense to you. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you next video.